Hello everyone, this is part 3 of 3 on curvilinear motion, in which I'll cover intrinsic or normal and tang tangential coordinates. Here we have a particle moving along a path that varies, such as this. We can define two unit vectors in the direction normal and tangential to the velocity vector. We can have E of n, which is a unit vector which is always perpendicular to the velocity vector, and E of t, which is a unit vector always parallel to the velocity vector. Now, whenever we describe any kind of motion, we want to have uh, equations that describe this motion. And so if we look at this diagram here, we should be able to derive the equations of motion for velocity and acceleration. It looks rather confusing, but bear with me. We have a path, which is this white dotted line here. We have a particle that is initially at a point A with a velocity V in the direction E tangential, that then moves over a time delta t to a new position a prime with a velocity v prime in the direction e prime of t. Now again I've exaggerated this situation just to allow us to more clearly see this but imagine if we take the limit of db tends to zero then this a prime would be infinitesimally close to a. OK, so let's define the velocity vector. Well, we can say that v, the velocity vector, is equal to this distance v in the direction e of t. So that's one way we can define it. But if we look at this sector here, there is another way that we can define this. But first, if we take the limit as db tends to zero, just as in the polar coordinates example, we can say the distance between a and a, a prime, ds, is equivalent to the arc length between a and a prime. Uh, and just to remind you, the formula for arc length is equal to the radius times the angle that the arcs of tens in radians. The radius of curvature in this case is rho. So we can say that ds is equal to rho times theta, which is the angle of tens, which is db. OK, so we have a relationship for ds. Now, s is our, if you take the limit, it is our displacement along this line. So you can say that v vector is equal to the derivative of ds with respect to time. And so that is the derivative of rho db with respect to time, which is just rho e dot. We have to be careful of which direction this is in. As neither of these, b dot nor rho, gives a direction. So the direction is in E tangential. OK. So we've got our relationship for V. So let's get A from this. So A vector is the derivative of the velocity vector with respect to time. Which is, if we use the product rule here, we get V dot times e tangential direction plus v times e in the tan tan tangential direction dot. So how can we find this? Well if we look at the section here where we have our unit vector in the tangential direction e of t and e prime of t and we have a difference between these two unit vectors d e of t. And we want to find out what this DE of T is. And in a very similar way to how we found DS, we can say that DE of T vector is equal to the radius, which in this case is this distance here, i.e. the distance 
the magnitude of this vector, which is the magnitude of e of t, times by the angle. And as these are all 90 degrees to each other, this normal tangential, normal tangential, this angle is also db. But we have to be careful about the direction in this case. You've noticed this de of t, the way I've drawn it, is actually parallel to e of n, which is this vector between a and c. So this is actually in the direction e n. What is the magnitude of any unit vector? Well, that is 1. And I'm going to take the time derivative, so I can say the e of t vector dot is equal to e dot e of n. So now I'm going to substitute this in for this term over here. So what do we get? Well, the acceleration vector is equal to v dot in the tangential direction. And it's equal to v e dot in the normal direction, just substituting in for et b dot e to the n. OK. But v is equal to rho d dot. So if I rearrange this for b dot, we end up with b dot is equal to v over rho. I'm going to substitute this now in for this value in here, and we end up with a ve uh, vector is equal to v dot in the tangential direction plus v squared over rho in the normal direction. Does this make sense to us? Well, if you remember that the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, and remember that rho is our radius of curvature, we can see that the acceleration in the normal direction, i.e. towards the centre of the curve, is v squared over r, so we're happy that this result is what we're expecting it to be. So we can now write that acceleration in the tangential direction is v dot, and the acceleration in the normal direction is v squared over rho. And so we can say that the magnitude of the acceleration is the square root of tangential acceleration squared plus the normal acceleration squared. Okay, that completes our series on curvilinear motion and on intrinsic coordinates. Thank you for watching the video.